panel like chat because I'm just stupid. But I'm pretty sure we are live now. Um, oh, yep. Yeah, always takes me forever. All right. So I hear you. You can hear me. I can hear you. And my, I told you right away, Lisa would be here. Oh, Lisa, yeah. <laughs> and she is the absolute best wrench slash person in Canada. Lisa for Canadian president. And we're here with uh, Sergeant Tank. I'm going to wait for a few more people to sure. join in here. And then, um, see, this is this what happens with the late night. This is a uh, late night, night owl session of Q&A. How you doing, Lisa? Lisa? Well, then I might as well just let you go. And as the people go, they'll want to reverse to catch up to what uh, you've said. But uh, like I said, uh, by the way, I love your shirt. I actually have a question about the shirt and your logo. So I'm going to come back to that. But sure. why don't you introduce yourself, let everybody know who you are, how long you've been on YouTube, how you got on YouTube, and uh, have at it. Right on. All right. Well, uh, thanks for having me on here, Mike. I definitely appreciate it. My name is Jeremy here with Sergeant Tank on the YouTube channel. Uh, been actually putting out video content since the end of 2016. But as far as supporting other content creators here on the platform, I want to say it started right around 2015 when I get, actually got more engaged in, um, uh, yeah, just kind of went from there. And obviously everything geared around uh, predominantly freshwater aquariums, more to the advanced um, aquarist lot with tutorials and how to's and do it yourself projects and a lot of stuff I focus on as far as breeding specifically. Awesome. I actually have been watching you for a while. I don't always comment because honestly, I get so many comments on my channel. If I get replies and left and right, it's just like a, a my email just explodes. Mm -hmm. But I do watch your channel all the time and you have tons and tons and tons of videos uh, Lisa has posted a link to your channel, just like I knew she would. Thank you so much, as, Lisa. Lisa, it's funny. Like two seconds, we were just talking about before I went live. I was like, I know Lisa, one of my wrenches. She'll be here right away. She's a strong she'll supporter in the community. Lisa is the woman. She is absolutely awesome. What's up, Slash Master? But, so, let me find it real quick. I have watched probably since... About a month after AE last year, I subscribed to your channel and started watching a ton of your videos. Well, I appreciate it. Um, so one of my first questions was, you seem to know like so much about fish, breeding, uh, the works. And was this through trial and error? Or did you just like jump into it and start Googling like crazy and pulling in all the information you can, and then this is what I'm going to do? Or was this over like years and years and years? This is, well, I got my first system right around in 1990. And of course, we all take a certain hiatus in between like high school. By the time I got married when I was 19 and got four kids now. So a lot, you know, of course, there's some time as a lot of us do. But with that being said, I mean, the last 13, 14 years, um, just, you know, uh, on the on the 12th. So uh, just a few days ago, just had my 14th year wedding anniversary, um, which definitely is making me feel super old at this point, really, <laughs> really dating me back. But when it comes to the aquarium hobby, it really came down to a lot of just trial and error and hands on experience. I mean, we really do have a phenomenal community, especially here um, in our market. So we have a lot of veteran aquarists, but really at that time, I wasn't doing research. I mean, things, as you know, were much different back that many years ago when you start out you have to go old school you got to either find books try to find forums if it is through the internet uh for me i really just talked to other hobbyists you know and then i just kind of got their take um other local hobbyists kind of got their take on it and then once i started getting familiar with um what i enjoy breeding then it just kind of took off from there and i breed a lot of different stuff you know i i i really am a big advocate 
when it comes to um, communities and specifically local aquarium clubs. And um, just did a video talking about the Breeders of War program and the importance that uh, really driving that in the community and how it, not only from a conservation point of view, but just getting especially youth. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of different things that I like to look at, um, you know, specifically the youth and that type of stuff to, to really try to promote and get them into the hobby. Yeah. Um, if you can get the younger kids in, I mean, that's the only way the hobby is going to survive and move on is to get just like with anything, the younger generation involved. And, uh, so that right there in itself is amazing. Um, just pushing forward the younger generation to love it. Absolutely. And with all those videos you make, I went back to like your, some of your first videos, and you have oh, such so a cringy. wide variety of videos that you've made. What what are your favorite types of videos to make? Um, breeding breeding videos because that's what I have passion in doing. That. Yeah, I mean, hands yeah. down, it's breeding. I'm not an entertainer. I'm an educator. Um, and I, you know, I, I see that with, and, and I'm not saying that people in this niche aren't geared ultimately towards education. I think that's pr part of it, but I think a lot of people understand that. I mean, anybody that's been following me long enough knows. I'm a very elaborate person because I think the watered down aspect is really what's ruining the hobby is without giving the essential details of somebody just from the basics of water chemistry before they even get into any type of breeding. If somebody asked me, Jeremy, what would your recommend recommendation for somebody either coming to the hobby or coming back into the hobby uh, with regard to keeping fish or breeding? And I always tell them, just enjoy your fish for a year and a half or two before you even start getting in the breeding. Because then you can learn in that time. You can learn about water chemistry. You can learn about behaviors of fish, what you actually enjoy to keep. And, you know, I see a lot of people that come and go in this hobby. And, and it's, it's unfortunate, but usually they end up burning themselves out. You know, I, I know a bunch of people personally that will stick with it for, you know, a couple, two or three years. And then they end up getting up to like 50, 60 aquariums. And they just say, see you later. I'm done. You know, so yeah, uh, burnt burning out is really quick with uh, especially with MTS, but also what people and I'd love this isn't even on my list, but I'd love to since you've been, you know, you're so passionate about it. I'd love to hear what you have to say is or give some advice to like when you start breeding fish and having these multiple tanks, like you're responsible to care for <laughs> the actual fish that come from these breeding, whether you're going to make more tanks, give them away uh, sell them to local fish stores, bring them to auctions. Like when you get into breeding, now you are responsible for all those offsprings. And how do you even go about, you know, simply and not stressfully, like just start a small breeding project? Um, and I guess what kind of fish would you start with? That to me is really the, the easiest response that I have for that is when that question is ever asked. Uh, for me, it's really trying to figure out what is the appropriate fish or species, whether if it's fish or invert, whatever the case might be, that's appropriate for your water chemistry. So yep. you might be in a, a water chemistry that may have more acidified water versus something of more alkalinity. And then we're running actively, I kind of stopped counting to be honest with you, but it's, it's an excess of 100, if not 110 active aquariums. Anybody that's been to our fish rooms, uh, which we have three, and look at our setups, I don't overpopulate the tank. So I have a lot of redundancy and a lot of multiple systems in place for any given species. And whatever that species might be, I really, for me personally, I have to look at my focus. What is my goal? What is my objective? And ultimately, you know, I really like to deal with locality first. So here in my local market, provide them to the club. And a lot of things I, I enjoy breeding aren't things that you can just go to your local fish store and obtain. They're going to be either on the red list, which unfortunately a lot of different species are, whether if it's a cichlid or a live bear or whatever the case might be, unfortunately has been placed on that list because of us humans that end up polluting different regions and, and what have you. But I, I'm very diverse. So I breed a very wide variety of different species and if somebody asked me, okay, what would be a good starter live bear that can probably adapt to most of the water chemistry, especially here in the United States, I would say endlers. 
Why I say right, antlers? Guppies, huh? guppies all the way, right? Yeah, guppies, antlers, something like that to get used to the process. And they can even come with their challenges. Uh, for me personally, I, I really enjoy like the Pulselia wing eye, which is a, and then that's just a fancy way of saying like your blue star antler, your lime green antler, your rainbow tiger antlers. You have like Adrian HD line, which is Adrian Hernandez, which are more like an N-class antler. Um, so a lot of really nice antlers. But what I enjoy about antlers specifically is they can go and they can adapt well in a 10-gallon ecosystem and like a lot of like floating plants, um, you know, driftwood. Uh, you can create some like rock structures, just a basic substrate. Keep it really low maintenance, keep it basic, and then you can start implementing shrimp if you wanted to into that, like neocaridinia shrimp. Just start out with like a cherry lineage or something like that of that variety. And then you could also incorporate mystery snails into that. Uh, and if you wanted to go up a size to, let's say, a 20 long or even a 40 breeder uh, with more surface area, besides those three that I mentioned, you could also incorporate uh, hence our logo is like an ancestrous bushy nose. You could also incorporate those into a breeding project. Um, and then you can actually start, once you get comfortable with it, recouping some of those costs and those investments. If you can find, as you're mentioning, kind of tying in with that, is finding a source for those fish to go to. Uh, and that's, that's the biggest thing that I actually just talked about not too long ago on my channel. I covered talking about the importance of not only clubs, but developing that repertoire with your local fish stores you know i'm a firm believer on on small businesses brick and mortar shops locally not only you know not only fish stores but just mom and pop shops in general i always try to go there to support them first and foremost and i don't know man i mean it could be a topic i can go out about for like days well uh, this is what uh, people want to hear man yes you're, you're super passionate yeah um i heard you say Real quick, I've been trying for a while now with no luck, but the bushy nose or the bristle nose. So your logo looks like a bristle nose pleco mixed with an arowana, but it seems to be a bushy nose pleco on top of a like an M1 Abrams tank <laughs> with the sergeant hat. Like you got it. Did you come up with that? Did you this get your buddies my... together? Like how did you come? You, sure. Like your shirt is so awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Yes. A lot of time went into the concept and that may be tying into the next question coming up here. So since we're talking about it, very make a long story short. So basically Lamont Mud, um, that I a lot of respect for, no longer working for Corey McRoy at Aquarium Co-op, but I really enjoyed his take on artistic ability, specifically dealing with more of an animated from that standpoint. And again, when I seen his artistic ability, I ended up reaching out and this was 2016. I ended up reaching out, getting the contact and then him and I worked together. I gave him, it took about two or three month process, but you can see his name. I even, I was so proud of him taking my vision. My wife is the one that came up with the name. I want something with authority is what I wanted. And, you know, I always envision an ancestrous bushy nose, an albino sitting on top of an army tank and something in that, in that realm. And we went back and forth a few times between myself and Lamont doing like, you know, private chats and this stuff, you know, like we're doing now to figure out, Hey, what is, what is the right thing? I did a rough sketch. I'm horrible at doing art, but I gave him a rough idea on what I wanted. And within five or six, um, you know, modifications to it he ended up coming up with something that i felt was really solid something that would stand out something that was different but the first thing i did before i even incorporated this was come up with a name something that would stand out on youtube i think it can be a catch-22 though because i that's kind of another side topic so i won't go on that little rant but sergeant tank is more because i don't have a military background very supportive of the military However, I don't personally, I think that was one of my, my biggest things, you know, when I had Lamont creating this, I was like, dude, make sure that this doesn't portray anything other. And I've talked to a lot and I have a lot of friends and I know people personally that are either active military or, you know, veterans and they never took it that way. Cause that was a big thing to me. I don't want to ever portray that 
Um, to me, it was just more about authority. And like I said, my wife is the one that actually came up with tank, hence obviously like a like an aquarium. And then Sergeant I, he has more more authority behind it. I actually love it. And I not once and uh, believe it or not, all the YouTube uh, people out there that watch me, I'm extremely smart, college educated, even. <laughs> and so I never even thought of that to start with. I just thought sure. it was an awesome name. Yep. played on tanks and the logo is crazy like i would give you two my aquarium box t-shirts for one of your t-shirts sent my way one well, for you why not send you one once one I get... for your wife and right. i just want right on. one of those because yeah. that logo literally so all right you know everybody's probably sick of me talking about my aquarium box but it took a long time for greg and myself t to get all this together. And the logo we came up with was, yep. was so long, sure. like just getting it going. And, and anyway, your logo is so badass. I love it. Like it's one of those t-shirts that like you just would walk in like a Newberry comics or like a badass store and be like, all right, I'll take the grateful dead t-shirt, the pink Floyd t-shirt sure. and uh Sergeant tanks. Yes. I'll take that t-shirt right there. You know what I mean? It's just, it's really cool. Right on. Well, I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I mean, I'm still kind of. You Don't been fucking on, you, change that thing. Oh, no, anything. never, never, never. You know, somebody talking like you that's been on the platform for a long time. But like you said, I mean, it takes sometimes years to come up with. And I had this in my mind for a very long time. It was just finding the right person I felt comfortable that I felt that was able to do what I envision, let alone, you know, at that time. Me being in Michigan, they're way out in California. You know, it's not like I'm just down the road where we can sit down and, you know, over a cup of coffee and talk about it. So I was very impressed and I was very proud of the work that that he had put into it in the time. Because um, at that time he was doing other work as well. But I mean, yeah, I, I couldn't be more pleased with it. So I would love to have a like way better logo than I do now because that logo is like if I could take that and put that on my channel, you know, maybe I'd get a few <laughs> more subscribers it. because it, it really is awesome. Sure. That's one of the first things I ever noticed is how awesome the logo is. And the, the name branding channel comes and everything. From background from so yeah, many brand, years. Brand, brand, brand. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I needed something that was going to stand out. So I felt at this point now being a couple years on YouTube, I think that I've accomplished at least that part. <laughs> So speaking about being on YouTube, um, I saw a lot of, I watched a lot of videos over the past, probably since, um, probably since we started talking in July or wherever, uh, you have a lot of videos with Corey and how did you, uh, when did you, how did you meet Corey and how did you get to, sure. you know, like go hang out with Corey and do yep. such a fun stuff because He's a big YouTuber. He's a sure. fun guy. Like, you well, know, I don't know him, but I assume he's a nice guy. Yeah. So Corey, I mean, again, that that goes back what I was saying earlier on was kind of supporting behind the scenes. You know, I remember when Corey had just a couple thousand subscribers and watching. The reason I liked it is because I seen the drive and the passion in somebody that I knew was going to succeed at no matter what they set out to do. And I think there's a part of me that was like. At that time, and I think we might go into this in a little bit more detail here in a few minutes, but because of my background and some of the unfortunate circumstances that happened seven years ago for me was a sense of like feeling because I, I, I was that individual that had such a drive. You educate yourself. You do what you need to do. No matter what, you're not going to fail. You continue to press forth. You continue to adapt and learn new things and that's kind of where for me, it kind of just started for me because I, I could relate. And of course, there's a lot of great individuals here on the platform. But I think for each and every one of us, we can all personally relate, you know, on a certain level. And then it kind of just went from there. Uh, first met Corey and uh, Bob Steenfot, uh at the Aquatic Experience back in 2016. It was my wife and myself. And we end up chit-chatting. And then a few months after that, 
well, a couple months after that, I ended up reaching out, as I was saying a little bit ago, to get the contact um, with regard to Lamont. And he was nice enough to go ahead and reached out. Lamont was willing to chit chat with me. And, you know, it's just cool to see those friendships develop. And the same thing I, I got to know um, a little bit before that was Rob Lupton through Flip Aquatics. I mean, you know, so it, it was really cool. Again, uh, that that relationship in how you can relate. You know, it's like with you, you know, it's, it's, it, what it, what amazed me is be able to see now all the people that I've, that I've seen for a lot of years on YouTube now having conversations with where you can develop relationships, you can develop these friendships and, and realize how much people are alike in a lot of different ways and in, in the interests that we have. It's, um, it's absolutely crazy. Um, so there's just, I mean, there's so many people unbelievable. in this community as it continues to grow that are so supportive. And for me, this is very therapeutic for me because it really has helped me a lot. The community, just from an emotional point of view, because it's an outlet for me. I know somebody, you know, uh, that I can kind of confine in and that's going to YouTube. You know, yeah. I, I wish, I wish I could hang out with you guys, you know, every one of you, like in person every day, it would be awesome. But you know, I know that's not the reality of it, unfortunately, but that's why I encourage people to go to these events like the Aquashella which is going on. And of course now the aquatic experience is going to be out, you know, in New Jersey, which unfortunately I won't be making it this year. Um, just because of the yes, drive. New Jersey. Sorry. So, uh, well, yeah, I know for you. Yeah. But I guess it's time, you know, I do know that they change it up every few years, which I understand that they need to, they need to switch up the demographics and, and play fair, I guess you would say. So. I agree. 100%. I have met, um, I'm, a bit of a, you know, if you watch my YouTube channel, I'm a bit of a character, but uh, in real life, I'm pretty family oriented. I keep to myself. I do not like to go out. I live in the woods. I like to stay there in like sort of a shell. But uh, if you always stay a shell, you know, it can it can lead to just awful things. So you got to get out there every once in a while. And YouTube sure. for me was that reason. Uh, put myself on camera, just talk about what I'm doing because I'm already doing it anyway. And then I met so many good people, you included, uh, friends for a long time, people I've met from other countries. It's YouTube is like a, almost like a modern day pen pal. Um, you can find people and then via text or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or, you know, all these areas of uh, communication, it's really opened my personal life to so many people that I'm really grateful. And this is how we spread the word on fish tanks are awesome, right? Like, That's it. How else do you get to portray yourself and do what you want to do. And at sure. the same time, send a message. Absolutely. It's not like we're going to get on national geographic like tomorrow, but you never know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the aquatic experience, we've got all these people that were at the last AE. We got Joseph, we got river life rack. Yep. Um, there's tons of people that saw us there. Uh, so, I would actually like to just get this question over with because it was the one question that I was like geeking out about yeah. only because um, when you're, I'm from Massachusetts, born and raised, never lived outside of Massachusetts. Uh, in Massachusetts, you kind of just ask, uh, there's no really, uh, you know, tiptoeing around it or what, what are some of the sayings? I got to walk on eggshells. Like when, yeah. when you're up here, it's just, it is what it is. Like, Hey, right what's on. up? It's and all just, me all day long. You just, you just ask the question. <laughs> um, so when we were in aquatic experience, you know, I saw you and I was like, Hey, I know this guy from YouTube, but you were in a wheelchair. And so then I was like, but I've seen some of his videos. Like, did he break his ankle or does, you know, does he have a disability? Sure. Not that it matters, but in my own head, I'm like, you know, hey, what's up with this guy? Yep. Uh, um, so, if no, that's that's maybe some more people want to know, and I would love to, for Absolutely. you to explain I mean, that's, that. That's a relevant question because one of the things before I was preparing people before, um, 
I even went to the aquatic experience to say, Hey, you know, if you end up seeing me in person, I'm, I'm going to be in my power wheelchair. And the reason that is back on July 23rd, 2011, uh, there was an individual under the influence doing uh, 70 plus miles per hour, ran through a stop sign in our vehicle, which we were in a four, four door sedan. And at that time, it was my wife, myself, and our three children, which we have four now. Uh, however, uh, needless to say, I mean, at, at 55, when you T bone somebody, uh, it's just a blessing that I'm even talking with you guys. So, um, it was definitely a miracle in and of itself that we even walked away, but, uh, unfortunately it left me with a permanent disability. I got, uh, several different, um, clinical diagnoses is not only from a physical point of view, the easiest way I can say it is I have a permanent neuropathic condition. So it radiates down from my cervical spine all the way down to my feet. And if the more technical term would be complex regional pain syndrome type two. So type one would be more in a, of an inherent type of condition. Type two would be more of a trauma force type of condition. And I, of course, have herniated disc, bulging disc, and all of that from it because of that trauma. So I've been through multiple surgeries. I have a neuro, neuromodulation unit, which is a spinal cord stimulator. Unfortunately, it hasn't done me any good. It only causes more residual issues. I've been on literally hundreds of opiate medications through the years, which, you know, I, I disregard those because of the issues that end up escalating into like pre, um, pre liver disease because of, um, all of the medications I've been on. And as you guys can imagine, when you're dealing with a, a chronic disability like that, specifically neuropathic, um, it leads to depression and, uh, another story outside of just my medical condition depending on where you guys are at, when you have to deal with a corrupt system, unfortunately, you also have to deal with the unfortunate circumstances of insurance companies. And they're never there for your best interest. And I'm still dealing with it and still bailing with it to this day. So um, needless to say, a lot of that compounded has only manifested into a lot of other issues. Um, it started out with a chronic pain causing me depression and then dealing with that. So yeah, I mean, I'm very open, very transparent with it. You know, I have a psychiatrist. I've, you know, been on medications, probably 30 to 50 different antidepressant medications. So I understand when people are going through uh, depression, when you're going through anxiety, I have multiple clinical diagnoses. The reason I'm so open about it is this may not be surprising to some people that do follow me over on the channel. And it may be surprising to some of why somebody would be so open about it. And that's always been my demeanor is before all of this, I used to mentor, I used to disciple, I used to work with youth, I used to work with other individuals. Um, and even for a period of time after that, but it really took a toll on me over the years. And this is kind of my way to express and be able to let people know of the therapeutic uh, aspects of this amazing hobby, and this community of how it can really help you um, clinically. I mean, I'm a walking testimony of it. I mean, this, that's why I have a lot of breeding projects. It's either you can hand over your money to medications they are only going to destroy you in the long term, or I'd rather justify if I'm going to invest in anything, something I, I have a passion that actually keeps me driving every day. Obviously, I got a wife and kids, which are the biggest reason why I'm even here talking. Uh, but besides that, secondary to that would be this hobby in this community. Yeah. So, um, you're 100% right. Um, and you can keep going. Don't feel you have to stop. This is, this is, uh, important for people to hear not only in the fish keeping community, but just sure. in the community in general, you know, uh, we don't need to get into politics or anything, but sure. in yeah. general, people should learn to just, you know, be more compassionate be more sharing, share your knowledge on whatever you're doing. Like, I don't want to say like, try to love one another, like go all Beatles on you. But yeah, uh, you know, this is important for people to express their feelings and not feel like they have to shove them all down into a bucket sure. and make it like completely depressing and never have to talk to anybody and share what they're going through. Because like, it's all real. So I appreciate yeah. you. Uh, oh, yeah, talking absolutely. About it. The reason I'm it took me years to get to that point to come to a place of that big thing, especially as men, we don't want because men are programmed and wired to be fixers. And, you know, for me, I grew up 
I was hands on. I did a hands on work, hands on trade. I mean, I got a lot of just that jack of all trades. There's a lot of different things I've done before that that I really miss doing. And, you know, anything from a trades point of view, I've been there, I've done it. You know, now I have to rely on other people. I can't even bring in groceries. You know, I, I have a limit and a restriction of, of five pounds, you know, and that's just obviously not even feasible when you're dealing with, especially a three year old. I mean, you can't just let them go and get in the stuff. So, but there is a lot of limitations that I do have um, that I try to follow. I'm one that can, tries to continue to press forth as much as I can. So the other thing would be is, well, I see Jeremy in some of your videos, you're walking around. Yes, I am fortunate enough where I press forward. I am able to walk. Um, I could have been easily paralyzed from that. However, I was fortunate in that situation where I was blessed. I was able to, to be able to push forth and be able to walk. I do utilize uh, even this this coming weekend. You know, we we have to go out in anything where I know it's going to be a long distance, and honestly, for me, a long distance is like fifty feet. Um, but out in public, then I'll go ahead and use it if I know it's going to be a lot of walking around, a lot of um, um, terrain that's up and down because that will affect a lot of my stuff. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, especially if you have any type of um, it. Don't look at it as a backache. This is very deep to me. It's it. I wish I had a backache. This is all neuropathic. So it's very, very it's something that that you can't just, you know, put ice on. And it's going to go away. Yeah, it's not so, like you guys can like stretch it out and then. like. No, just, I wish I could. But unfortunately, I mean, I yeah, from that point of view, I've been through everything you can imagine. You, you know, obviously, I had to go through all of that stuff anyways, which is a mandatory requirement um, in the politics that go along with it, which I won't get into with insurance companies. They'll push you and push you and push you and push you, even though they know it's not going to do you any good. It's going to only do more damage. Um, and I did lose a lot of respect for the medical field after that, because unfortunately, I was pushed to a point And ultimately, we ourselves know our body the best, know what's going to work, what's not going to work. But I'm to the point now where I can literally sit down with a pain specialist. I can sit down with orthopedic specialists and I can sit there and start talking the same lingo. You know, I mean, it just you get familiar, unfortunately, after seven years of dealing with it, uh, you get yourself educated, obviously, in the condition. So, you know, my heart goes out to people that that deal with anything like that um, or even anything similar. I can definitely I, I understand. And that's why I try to be an outlet for people like myself coming on live streams like this, the just be in chat, you know, take your mind off from it, even if it's for an hour, if it's for 30 minutes, you know, because anybody that deals with chronic pain or depression, whatever it is, that 30 minutes can feel like an eternity. Yeah. Um, I don't know exactly what you're going through, but my wife is a strong advocate of um, doctors not over prescribing as far as, you have a back pain, let's figure out where it's coming from instead of just like jamming pills down their throat. Now, I don't know if this is what you've been through for your whole situation. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's just medicate, medicate with all these crazy, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult situation to talk about. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if anybody has any questions about it, I'm more willing to, uh, try to explain as best as I can, but yeah, I mean, when I've been through just just about everything uh, from a non-invasive point of view um, that you can possibly go through as a human being, uh, you know, I've been there, I've done it. So yeah, I mean, most people, I mean, this this stimulator uh, is it's a hundred and thirty thousand dollar thing, so it's no joke. Um, obviously, if you don't have insurance, then that's a different story, but um, you know, you, you still have to, of course, pay a certain percentage and depending on where you're at, but I mean, the expense that goes into it. And unfortunately for me, um, it just, it, it caused me more issues. And I have one that was actually here in Michigan, the specific battery that I have, which controls the whole unit. Uh, I was the second one to be FDA approved for that specific battery. So, um, it, in a, in a, the technical term for it is called burst technology. So what it does is it targets different brain waves 
and instead of feeling a sensation. So if anybody's ever used a tens unit or a like a stim unit to where you feel like a that's more muscle related. So you, let's say you have muscle bundles somewhere. If it's on your arms, if it's in your back, on your legs, uh, wherever it might be, you put that on there and it'll kind of start dissipating those muscle bundles where you can feel like a vibrating sensation. So what they do is they'll program it to where I can feel a sensation, which runs basically from my T9, my thoracic, all the way down to my feet. And then they switch it over uh, to that burst technology. And now it's like fan where you don't feel anything. Unfortunately, with me, again, I just have been a challenge because of my anatomy. I'm not sure what it is. I do have a smaller torso. I don't know if that, that has any contributor with it or not. But then I'll end up getting a bunch of residual groin pain, wrapping around the stomach. Nobody wants to feel that. And that's like very, very uncommon, especially to burst because you're not supposed to feel any sensation. But I could still feel a sensation even more so after I turn the whole unit off. And you can't see anything on the outside of me. It's all done through uh, a magnetic programmer. So. Dennis. It's a very complex, yeah. Yeah, I mean, complex and super. There is one other person in the community I, I don't want to mention just because out of respect for them. There's somebody here that has been a supporter in the community for a long time that reached out, and they are they are older um, than myself, and they had gone through multiple back surgeries, and I had to be honest because I'm very transparent. I don't like sugarcoat and stuff, but I never want to persuade anybody either. You know, I don't. I've had a couple of people since I've been on YouTube reach out when I've talked about the stem. And I mean, if anybody is legitimately ever looking, going that route, I, you know, you can find me on Facebook. I would rather educate you on my own experience, but I never want to persuade anybody from, from not doing it because there is a trial phase that you have to go through as well. So that's kind of a whole nother story. So you first have to do a trial before you even have the permanent one done. And um, with mine, they still had to do a four or five inch, inch incision. They had to remove some of my spinous process, some of the vertebral body, so big bony structures. So you're legitimately actually going through full on back surgery. And like I said, I've been through multiple back surgeries. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I just have been one of those cases, unfortunately, that I fall into that group of statistics where not only having failed back surgery, having this failed implant surgery, other things that have failed. That's why I'm so passionate about the hobby. You know, what people see is they do see a smile. You know, I try to send off a smile, but when I have a bad day, people know it. You know, I don't like to put on a false facade like everything's okay. You know, if some days are a little bit better than others, I just have now learned over the years to try to keep my mind focused on other stuff. And I think that's what's important for YouTube too, is for you to be genuine and honest. Yeah. Uh, give a little bit of your real life, what's going on. Um, so speaking of your day-to-day -day life, how do you manage to take care of all those fish tanks? Well, I'm fortunate and blessed enough to have, you know, wonderful kids that are old enough now to support and a wife. So my wife and my family know how much not only YouTube and the community is to me, they're very supportive with it, which is awesome. And also how important it is to me. And I have amazing friends through the club. They're also very supportive. So without going and spending a bunch of time talking about how I do maintenance, there is a lot of things that I've covered on my channel talking specifically as far as automation and continuous drips and really simplifying it. And instead of doing actual water changes on a hundred, 110 systems, I do just a lot of top offs. And what's nice about that is I can have my daughter come down with a remote switch. Cause I have reservoirs that I hold, you know, I have holding tanks with water that's already been, um, you know, sitting for at least two or three days before I even introduce it into the systems. She can come down and they think it's fun. You know, it's like, Hey, hit the, hit the on, hit the off switch. All I got to do is just go through and do top offs. And, you know, from a breeding point of view, you know, everything is at, at an appropriate level. Either I can sit here at my desk if I'm going through and pulling eggs or whatever the, or, you know, pulling spawning mops, whatever the case might be. 
Uh, once we get out of this location, which we plan on, obviously, if we weren't dealing with the stuff I've been mentioning, we would have already moved from here. It just has really hindered a lot of stuff just because from a financial point of view and everything else. And once things hopefully start moving along, um, hopefully in the next year or two, we can get out of here. And then my my dream would be is like a, like a pole barn. I've always envisioned because I want to do like a rescue thing. We don't have like a rescue thing here in Michigan per se. So like the Ohio Rescue Project, which a lot of you guys are probably familiar with. Um, I want to incorporate something like that here because I've done a lot of rescue projects through the years, um, with turtles and fish and stuff like that. You know, somebody, if, if I have the means to do it, because I do have stock tanks, larger stock tanks as well, if I'm able to house it until I can rehome them, then I'm, I'm willing to support, you know, other hobbyists in that way. That's great. Um, as far as, uh, YouTube, like the spectrum goes you're in ohio uh mich uh, the mitten state you texted yes. me when we were talking yep and then you have the ohio thing like i'm all the way over on the northeast uh we have woods hole oceanographic institute and everything is uh it's like constant constant conservation over here it's like the whole new england region all the way down to uh I would say like South Carolina, like sure. down the whole East coast. And it's amazing. And now you're like, what is Michigan considered? Is that the Midwest? I would say, yeah. I mean, that would be a fair thing to say. Yeah. So, but you have, at least you have freshwater lakes, like the whole. Absolutely. Inside the conservation is not there because they don't even care about that. It's just, it's really tough to make it sure. blast through the whole U S. Did I lose you? No, I'm still here. Sorry, I don't know if it cut out. Did you ask me another follow up or? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it is 10:42. Not too late for us, folks. Super early for West Coast folks. I'm going to ask you the question that I've been dying to ask everybody, but I never, it, it's always the bottom on the list. Okay. What is your favorite thing in your fish room that is not fish or tanks? Like what's the one thing that has to be there for you to use clean with like just, it's got to be in there. Very easy the response. Number one thing. Very easy response for me. Hands down, acrylic spawning mops. They will be your best friend. Get acrylic spawning mops. Yes. Mine is paper towels. I have uh, awesome paper towel holders above every single one of my tanks. Um, just like, you know, screwed into the ceiling. And then I'm just like, oh, what do I need to do? Paper towel, obviously. Boom. I I got sick of the paper towel, so as you can imagine, I just take my shirt and I'm I'm to the point now where I'm just like <laughs> always making a mess. So I just I use whatever I can, you know. If oh. I gotta grab the cat and and use, no, I'm just teasing, but yeah, <laughs> the dog. Yeah, yeah. If it's tiny. No, no I, I mean I use dogs. my so shirt, I, I totally use towels, I use everything, but paper yeah. towels is like the number one thing. If I'm doing a water change, if I'm just feeding, if I'm just checking out the tanks, no matter what I'm doing, having a paper, literal, like a paper towel hanger above every single tank, it's not that expensive, very cheap, is my favorite thing in my, in, around all my tanks. Right on. Love. Yeah, I mean, you can never get enough of paper towel, that's for sure. Um, I got a few more questions. You want to, you want to answer a few more questions before we shut it down? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I got nothing going. So, I mean, so I love to ask this question, um, especially with, so you are just about at what? 35 or 4,000 subscribers, right? Sure. Are you at all jealous with all the videos you put out and all the great content? 
content you put out. Uh, some of these YouTubers that just like go on and put a bunch of stupid videos out like myself and get like <laughs> thousands of subscribers like instantly. I mean, I've been on YouTube longer than you, but some of these channels come on and they're just like putting out stupid videos and all of a sudden they have a hundred thousand subscribers. Do you get jealous of that ever? Um, it would, it would be dishonest for me to say that there isn't a certain embassy at certain points, but I have helped out other creators and supported. I do understand at this point when it comes to YouTube, but I've told people and they laughed at me, you know, when I first started out, I did everything backwards. I started out doing collaborations. I started doing fish room tours with other, I started out backwards. I mean, my tags, title, description, I wasn't paying attention to any of that stuff. Not until the, this past year, solid nine months, where I've been really studying and understanding YouTube. And then I had to take accountability and really reflect, hey, you know what? If I even look back at a lot of my videos, and I think every one of us, I mean, I do leave them up there. Uh, technically, I, I would have had that little badge, you know, next to your your name or whatever on the on your main banner page on YouTube with having over 500 videos. I did actually, that showed up at one point, but I deleted a lot of them because I noticed it was adversely affecting the channel because I was known for doing a lot of live streams. I had a lot of interaction, a lot of engagement, and it wouldn't be uncommon even half the subscribers that I had to have between 50 and 80 people in there because I was on a, I was on a, on a routine. I had a schedule. So at this point, no, I honestly don't. I can say fairly... At one point, yes. Now I don't because I do want to start putting more time. Just seeing a lot of the, you know, I don't want to rant, but just seeing a lot of the unnecessary drama. Go ahead, that, rant away. Yeah, a lot of the unnecessary drama that uh, that takes place in the in not not just on YouTube, but spe more specifically in the community, uh, really started just when you're already dealing with issues yourself, like I've already mentioned it just really compounds that even more. So I end up kind of just taking a hiatus away. I still try to stay engaged as far as, you know, interaction like this, like on live streams, that type of stuff. Uh, but I wasn't being, you know, at all consistent. And that really did affect the channel greatly. And the other thing is that I always tell people when you do stuff like this, you know, if you have a hundred subscribers or 500 subscribers or, if you're getting close to a thousand, you have to be able to maintain and sustain that growth by putting out good, consistent content that manifests everything that you need to on the platform. And what I mean by that is if, and I did, I, I did collaborations with other YouTubers and when they start saying, Hey, check this person out, but it, that was my fault as a creator, I wasn't fulfilling my obligation by by listening to what the viewers wanted, because I am more geared towards advance. I don't really focus too much on beginner stuff. And for me, it was just one of those things. I wasn't listening. I mean, that's that's what we need to do is educate. And I was just kind of, maybe it was more prideful. I, I'm not sure what it was at the time, but I'm really now trying to focus and really take it seriously because I want to listen to what, what people want to watch. You know, I want to start listening to if they have a suggestion you know, where it's, it's never like one of those things like, oh, Jeremy's too good to do that type of content. I don't want to ever come off that way. But I do have to be able to appeal to what viewers want to watch, what the subscribers want to watch. Because I know for me, if I'm not engaged in somebody's content, I'm not just going to subscribe to that channel just to, to subscribe. And that's why I tell people all the time, you're only doing more harm to that content creator. I would rather somebody not subscribe and watch me here and there versus hit that subscribe button and never watch the content because that really can affect things. And I think the other part of it, as far as growth wise, because suggested, I can show up. I've had people reach out to me way back last year um, and say, you know, they were joking around. They're like, what are you paying Google? Because you're showing up in my suggested all the time. It's like, I understand how to, you know, um, show up on the side, you know, and suggested um i kind of a side hobby for me is i enjoy doing 
um, thumbnails. You know, I'm, I've been playing more around with that. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to get more interest back into the walk around and start doing some video recording in my tanks. What I really wish is if I had better internet, I would actually walk around like I used to do and do live streams because that's what people knew me for is on the on the fly type of educational stuff, whether it's shipping a fish, if it's doing surgical procedures on a fish. I mean, there's a lot of different things I covered. And I would literally have to go back and pretty much redo a lot of those videos, unfortunately. Some of that stuff I caught I covered in live streams. Like I said, I never ended end up uploading because I just felt it was hurting the channel more than helping. And other of those were even edited videos where I felt like I put the time into it. And then it was just so cringy for me. If I couldn't even watch it, I was like, nobody else is going to want to watch it. The audio either sucked. The video sucked. Um, you know, I was doing too many ums and ahs. And I'm very critical of myself. I, I, I would say I'm borderline. I think you're describing my videos. Perfectionists where they have to be perfect. And I know, <laughs> I know that's wrong. That is a wrong mindset to have. But as long as I'm steadily... Even if it's think, low growth, I'm okay with that at this point. Do you think uh, YouTube is oversaturated with um, so many videos that when you're actually needing a video to learn or figure a problem out in your tank that it's just become impossible to find? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's got to the point where, yes, I would say that the the platform is... Even when I came into doing videos there was still a lot of other people doing videos. I mean, we can all name, we all know people within the niche that were recognized. And there's still a lot of other YouTube channels that I still come across that have like, I don't remember the names off the top of my head, but like 200, you know, thousand or even 300. It's like, you know, there's, there's other ones out there, but I, I think a lot of us focus on within this quote unquote community, you know, like we're talking about earlier on, but I would say that would be fair, uh, a fair assessment to say from a, from a point that, that there would be certain video content that is saturated. I think it's uh, saturated beyond belief and, uh, it's not from a monetized view or a video sure. view. It's just, you know, there's, everything's been covered. Uh, yes. Joey, you know, he does updates and he's, charismatic and that's content that you want to watch dustin actually provides information whether everybody thinks it or not you know sure he's grinding away at providing good information but there's so many small channels like yourself yep myself you know that actually have beneficial info that people can't get to because it's just stupid video after stupid video after fucking stupid sure. goddamn video of just junk plowed out there every single day and i am clearly guilty of that um you know when the when the videos run out but you have a channel that has unbelievable information and uh so that's why you know i like to interview because people should know about your channel because they can learn something and that's what's yeah, most I, important yeah i definitely appreciate it i mean one of my things is you don't want to be skewed versus what somebody else is doing um you know but you know it it is i, I would agree with you and everything you said i mean there there is so much content now i'm to the point of putting out, like I said, at that point, I had that little badge where I'm like 250, 260 videos in now, but at one point I did have 500 because I remember it uh, popping up at one point, but then, like I said, I ended up deleting a lot of those. Oh, I um, deleted so many videos. Uh, specifically, 300 live videos, easy, I deleted. Sure, sure, and I did notice where it never, it never negatively affected the channel. Some people are like, oh, dude, just leave them on there. It, it, it couldn't hurt, and I'm like, I don't want people to watch it, watch that stuff. That was just, you know, a lot of times it was live streams that were like, had nothing to do, you know, at all with a hobby. And I don't want to, you know, what I'm doing now is, is I do feel that there is a common misconception that you can build a channel alone, whatever niche it is, if you do it right, based on doing live streaming. 
yes, it isn't going to progress if you put the time into good videography, of course, good audio, have the right studio set up, you know, whatever the case might be, um, that you can do it. Because I did build my channel at one point just from doing that. And it did I not pay. I think the aquarium channel, uh, we've, we've all, we're all done. If you're not uh, up there with Rachel and Dustin or Joey or some of the other big channels that have 60, 70, 80, 100 plus million thousand subscribers, like sure. we're, we're not going to get there because everybody is trying to do that. And it's just, it's, it's bogged down. Sure. Um, you can only hope that the information that you're giving out will help somebody. Or if somebody likes you from years ago, then they're loyal. But other than that, yep. you know, it's done now. I feel so bad for these new, you know, 18 to 25 year olds that have aquariums and they want to start YouTube channels. And then just sure. like, you know, nobody pays any attention to them when they actually have stuff yep. to, it sucks. See, I, vo I focus more on viewership. For me personally, I don't know about for you, I focus more on viewership than what actually subscribers. Because you can have a million subscribers, but if you only average in, you know, 15 or 10% of that versus your subscriber to viewer ratio, I would rather, for me, have somebody, like I was saying earlier on, that's not subscribing, at least watch the content. You know, well, I'll rather... views, get, views gets the dollars, so... I mean, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, for me, I just kind of focus more on that now as far as overall engagement, not to say, hey, it kind of validates and makes you feel good as a content creator. None of us want to see a reduction, you know, not, you know, as content creators kind of validates like, hey, you know, I'm putting the time into it. Uh, you know, I'm doing what I, I feel that I'm capable of doing to be able to try to get some growth on YouTube. But I, I don't compare myself to other people you know i can legitimately at this point say i don't like just because they're growing faster if we focus on that it's only going to discourage you more um because i'm not them they're not me and i do only appeal to a certain demographic and you know but and taking a hiatus doesn't help either you know i, I wouldn't recommend that you just kind of fly, you know fall off the planet and then start putting out uh, content again Consistency yeah, is the I biggest did. thing. I haven't put up videos in forever because, uh, well, it's summer and I like fishing and camping and the beach and I don't like making videos, but, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I haven't really been paying too much attention to chat. I just, I, I didn't want to miss anybody if they had a specific question or anything. Well, so. what I usually like to do around this time is... Yeah let you answer questions sure i've literally crossed off every goddamn question i had for you right plus on. ones that i added did i pass did i get a I, passing grade <laughs> a plus 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 i appreciate it buddy um oh. i'd love talking to you uh what if you would take two minutes to if anybody what do we have we have like yeah over 42 we're almost at 50, like two seconds ago. Um, if anybody has any questions for Sergeant Tank, uh, please ask them in the comments. If you have any pressing questions, um, actually, this is crazy. So what I decided to do my last Q&A is uh, any super chat that is a uh, you know, you guys super chat so you get your question answered quicker. I uh, I split with whoever I'm interviewing because that only makes sense. Because you're not super chatting me, you're super chatting, you know, Sergeant to answer your question. He oh, knows a lot about fish and a lot about fish keeping. So it's not like a, a random, like, what kind of under you, underwear are you wearing? What do you do <laughs> here? Like, if you have legit questions, ask them if you really want them answered immediately super chat it and uh go for it all right buddy i appreciate that very much i'm kind of uh speechless i'm lost of words so um well lumpy dog here is wondering said so jeremy when is the shop hop in southeast michigan so that's going to be on september let me ver verify here 
Um, it's going to be on September the 29th, which is a Saturday. We'll be leaving out of Grand Rapids, taking a bus, and we'll be hitting up. Um, if you want to private message me, Jeff, uh, via Facebook, I think you're on. Yeah, you're on Facebook. Um, I can give you all of the stops for which we will be going to. So, all uh, right. So I'm just scrolling up in chat here, you guys. Uh, if anything stands out, um, if you have a specific question for me, just as a reminder, just put at Sergeant Tank. Uh, it's not Pats anymore, so don't. I just went back. Um, the only reason I even added Pats in the first place, I think it ended up actually people thought that they were like legitimately at one point. I had other buddies like, did somebody like hack into your account and they have Pats on it? But no, that was me. It's back to Sergeant Tank. I was. Long story short, it was more for an algorithm thing, and it didn't, it didn't improve anything, so. All right. So I'm just quickly going, you guys, and if I see that little orange sergeant tank stand out, um, thank you so much, Lisa. That you're a big supporter in the community. I know you are here on uh, Mike's channel uh, with dropping the links. I definitely appreciate that very much. All right, so I'm going to scroll. I didn't see anything that stood out, so I'm scrolling back down to the bottom. And we got a $10 super chat from Jeff Rose Fish Keeping. So thank you so much, Jeff Rose. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, Jeremy, what would you say the longest interview you've ever had on YouTube? Oh, my goodness. So that would either be the, I would say the interview that I did with Jeff Rose Fish Keeping here when he was in Michigan and visited me three weekends ago. Uh, besides that, the other interview that I did would be over on, it was, um, it was Lup Diesel at the time, I think before he switched it to Flip Aquatics, but Rob, Rob and Amanda Lupton through Flip Aquatics, uh, when I was in Ohio visiting with them, I did a live stream. That was springtime, I think of 2017 um that was kind of a long one and also with lucas bratz at lrb aquatics i ended up doing a live stream with him uh that same time uh was the day after that but uh yeah so i enjoy interviews um i i definitely do i enjoy being put on the spot i just enjoy that i think a lot of that goes to my background um if you kind of want to know something about me that you may not know if you don't follow me over there. I am interviewed or certified in interview and interrogations because of my background as an investigator. Um, so, Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, you probably didn't know that, but I am Wicklander Zalowski certified. So that's just a fancy way. If you want to know what that means, just Google Wicklander Zalowski. Um, it'll, it should pop up. So, But, yep, that was a lot of years back. Um Let's see. Uh, Lisa said, thank you for continuing to educate and support the community. Well, thanks so much, Lisa. I mean, you guys are the ones that, that keep us going. I mean, we I, if I could financially afford it, I would just be dishing out money to, to every one of these moderators and anybody that supports like, share, dislike, whatever it is. Uh, let's see. I here. love uh, sharing the super chat with Lisa because honestly, I don't even know why I have anybody watching me because i'm not that entertaining and my info is pretty generic but I, I like i'm still amazed at anybody who is tuning in honestly but i love giving interviews that's like what sure my passion is it's just like live now stuff. now if 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 you would be willing i'm gonna have to now have you on my channel to do an interview. <laughs> oh, I mean, 100%. I, dude, I love doing interviews because I think, you know how it is. If you go into a live stream, anybody that's watched my live stream is like, I've covered so many topics in live streams. And I'm like, you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs like, okay, what do you talk about? What do you say? You know, and you don't want to have like dead spots in there where you're not saying anything for a few, you know, like a minute at a time. It gets kind of awkward. <laughs> Oh, dude, but, I uh, would love to have someone interview me for once. That would be I'll do it the right on. best because nobody understands how hard it is to like research a channel or even if it's a channel that you like 
or like, you know, you're talking to somebody, can you do this? Can you do that? Like I normally have no filter, so I don't like to filter anything. And hopefully the interviewee doesn't give a fuck what I say. And then, uh, boom, I can just do this. Yep. Um, all right. So am I switching? Um, I think I'm still switching, right? Via Google Hangouts, where it should be automatically switching to me when I'm talking. I do have a delay, of course. Okay, I am. All right. So I thought I'd seen something here in chat where they weren't seeing me. Oh, um, no, go for it. But uh, no, they. I, I just checked, so I'm I'm good. So I, I must have misunderstood. I'm trying to figure out where that was even at. You know how the chat bounces on you. Um, so Mr. D says, Sergeant Tanks, bi biggest mistake you've made in the hobby. Um, not quarantining. I end up uh, acquiring, which I shared this story in great detail. However, very, very long story short, uh, I made a rookie mistake uh, about three years ago and didn't quarantine some plants. And I ended up introducing some elobiops today in one of my neocaridinia, which I've been lime breeding because I've been breeding shrimp for almost 14 years. Um, and it was a 90 gallon setup, all nice aquascape. And one day I end up seeing die off after die off after die off after die off. And I end up taking it because I'm, I'm a, I'm a nerd like that. So I like to geek out on the science aspect of it. I end up, I have a good relationship with the local veterinarian that doesn't deal with fish per se, but he's also a, a fish keeper. You know, he's a fish nerd like us, maybe not quite to the extreme, but you know, he's still a doctor and I respected him and I wanted his second opinion. So put my mind at ease. I ended up going in there one day. It was six, seven o'clock in the evening and all these techs were gathered around. I brought in all these little tiny samples of these small little cherry shrimp. And we ended up putting our heads all together and end up confirming 100 percent it was the yellow biopsy today, which is like just and I've covered videos on that, too. Uh, if you want to know more about it. And then right after that. So I lost, needless to say, between 900 and 1000. I would anticipate because of all the offspring that I was raising up as well. And then I had a central, it was about a 1200 gallon central unit system where I was breeding not only shrimp, placos, uh, microgeophagus, like some of your German blue ram cichlids, um, different, different type of fish uh, within this large central system because of the pheromones and the hormones that are released uh, within a system like that. It will ultimately induce and inhibit breeding. So that's why a lot of, us as breeders have systems like that. Again, I didn't have quarantining. I ended up introducing because I trusted the source. Ended up introducing um, uh, species into that system, and within a day or two, very very bad case. One of the worst cases of ick I've ever had break out. And anybody that's not familiar with uh, specifically ancestral species like we have here on our shirt, um, it can be. If you don't react to it in time, a lot of uh, bacterial issues will start to take effect. And that's unfortunately what ended up happening. And I literally had to end up euthanizing the majority of them because they were too far gone. I lost about seven or 800. How do you um, go about doing that? Um, as far as euthanizing? Yeah. I would recommend using clove oil. That's That would be the the most humane way, I feel, as a hobbyist of what we have in our possession. So now a certain ratio of what that clove oil may be, depending on what species, it really kind of depends. But if you've ever done, if anybody's ever done any type of surgical procedure, which I have, um, and we could probably talk about that when I have you on mine sometime, I can talk a little bit more about, if unless people want to know, I, mean, I don't know how much time you have, but I've covered with veteran Aquarius just a lot of the dietary needs because I've kept, I'm known for keeping uh, specifically severums and it's really technically severum wouldn't even be the appropriate term to use to classify that type of fish. It's really um, your heroes of fasciatus, which is like your gold variety, your turquoise or your green, um, which are egg layers. And that is another fish that I breed, but the dietary requirements and needs that those specific fish need. So I I learned years back in order to specifically with hole in the head disease, which is basically like an oh, ulcer. Worse. I and can never think of any reason like just I don't use any medication and I can correct it within forty eight hours. Nice. 
And I think I shared a video. I may have to do another in-depth. But the problem is when you do types of videos like that, as you guys are obviously aware, on the platform, I don't want to ever... I don't like talking a lot about meds. I'm very familiar with medication disease um, as far as dewormers and stuff like that and how to use them just based on experience. But if you start implementing some of that stuff in the video, and I have shown a video, if you really are curious, I don't remember what it's titled. It's probably cringy. I think I did it live. I did actually leave it up there. I was surprised I didn't get a bunch of negative feedback, but everybody thought it was educational. You know, nobody gave me any negative feedback, like, how dare you do that? But it had a deal specifically with a Synodonis lucipennis, um, which is like the cuckoo catfish, you know, a, another way to look at it. Oft, oftentimes, um, misrepresented like like the, the, the petrocola or even the the, um, the multipentatus, which is a larger strain. But, Isn't the cuckoo what they put in uh, African cyclotanks? Yeah. Yep. Yep, you yeah. can put those in there. They they fare well um, with a with a lot of different uh, species of of that. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I did something similar to that. But the process and the concept behind it would be the easiest thing if you want a visual aid to look at, um, rather than me explaining it in depth. If you want to check out, if you just search like surgical procedure on my video, I'm sure it will pop up. But I do know it's still on there. But if you implement that same concept. Nine times out of 10, it works just about every time with specifically um, a lot of these South Central American cichlids and even more specifically like your um, your hybridized blood parrot, which is basically a cross between a Midas and a Red Devil. A lot of people don't like them. You know, after they see me keeping them, I did see other people in the community getting interest in them, which is good. I really like them because of the fact of their demeanor and temperament. That's why I enjoy Severum so much. Um, I think a lot of people think like I'm this big Placo guy because which I have I've I've done a lot of Placo breeding through the years, but that's not even like my big you know I'm I'm very diverse you know I, I do a lot as far as with the club when it comes specifically with the breeders war program. I wish I would have started bapping a long time ago. That's just a fancy way of saying they get your bat points if you're part of an aquarium club. Uh, if you want to know more, more about that, I, I did talk about that um, actually just this past week. Um, pretty <laughs> great detail. <laughs> I like how you say Pleco. Pleco. <laughs> there you go. That's more like it. Um, I remember there used to be a an old wives tale that floated around years ago. If you use the word Placostomus, it brings bad luck. I don't believe in that hocus pocus, but I just thought it was funny. So you won't ever hear me say placostomus. Usually I'll just refer to it as like a bristle nose placo or an sister species bristle nose or pushy nose. But yeah, right, I mean, well, I, I need to know where you're getting the, the placo because that would be spelled like P L A Y. How would you say it? Pleco. P L E. It's a Michigan thing. C -O. It's like. It's like milk or milk. My wife always gives me a hard time. She's like, did you say milk? I was like, yeah, milk. She's like, it's not like M-E-L-K. Sorry, milk, you know. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yeah, exactly. You say tomato, <laughs> I say French dressing. Doesn't matter. Well, we have like still over 43 people watching and uh i'm ready for bed so i'd like sure. to ask like what's the one question jesus i asked all the questions oh one more question yeah i guess i could ask do you do this full-time or do you have a outside full-time job nope i've been disabled since 2011 so i just do this this is purely a a hobbyist point of view for me um, so I mean, yeah, I mean, it's really just a way for me to support myself, but also be able to support other people through education, through insight, to getting people intrigued into what it is. And, um, what I enjoy is the challenges as all of us are aware, no matter how long you've been in the hobby, it doesn't matter. I mean, I have people through my club that have the legacy award, one specific individual. 
And you can look at like the North American Legacy Award if you want to Google it. You can check more into it if, if anybody here in chat wants to. It's a, it's a hard thing to get. Needless to say, very few people have that accomplishment. And this individual alone through my club that's been breeding since the 1960s has not, you know, let alone bapped. So meaning on record through a club since the, you know, the better part of the 70s. Um, one year alone, BAP 79 different species of fish. And they're a cumulative, I want to say now he's right around in excess of seven, 750 different species. That doesn't mean color varieties. That means different species of fish. Needless to say, I have a high expectation for myself to accomplish that goal one day. And that's what I want to strive because now... I'm more into that program. People have been telling me for years, why don't you do the program? Why don't you, you know, I just, it's one extra thing I had to add to my plate, but now I'm actually enjoying it. It gets me more engaged here at home. It gets my mind because now I have something to look forward to, to accomplish, you know, and maybe that might not make sense to some, but for somebody like myself that does have a disability that deals constant pain, deals with depression on a daily basis, we do anything we can in our power to get our, get our minds off from it. And if it's something as silly as breeding, maybe the sum, that for me is like, I can just nerd out all day. Yeah, that's a, actually, that's awesome. Um, I'm, my sister is the same way as you. And uh, so I appreciate everything you do on a daily basis on a minute basis to stay awake and right and do what you need to do to just like fight it all off. So I appreciate that very much. And I enjoy doing stuff like this. I mean, I was, I was honored in the fact that you I think you reached out to me a few months ago and that was my fault that I didn't. Um, and I think I just, I dropped the ball again because I think you're on, uh, you're, I think you're with your family and then you're like, Oh yeah. Then I remember you doing live stream and I remember you mentioned the kids and I'm like, dang it. I just dropped the ball once again. <laughs> oh, it's so tough. Too many kids, too many things going on. My memory isn't, believe it or not. I know, you know, when you have a passion about something, your memory of course can remember things, but other stuff. I like if the wife asked me something, you know, I think that's most men were probably guilty of this. But, you know, you know, I'm like, oh, crap, there's an appointment. Man, I forgot about that. I'm not good about writing things down anymore like I used to. If I don't write it down, I will forget. That's almost always a guarantee. Uh, if my wife doesn't tell me what to do, then I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> you have to be here at this time. Do this, yeah. do that, do that. Okay, thanks, babe. Get the schedule ready. I'm good to go. I'll just work and have fun with the kids and you just make the schedule. Tell yeah. me where I need to be. <laughs> oh, there's still like over 43 people, but I'm friggin' tired as shit. So let's, I was going to uh, say, yeah, you probably got, you got the grind again tomorrow. So, Oh, actually I'm on vacation this whole week, but my right wife on. is working like, all week so uh i got the four kids every day saturday sunday monday tuesday blah 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 and then they go back to school the week after yep. so same with ours yep all the uh southern kids down south they're they've been in school for like a month i know isn't that crazy it's they so go to crazy. school in like first of october uh, i mean august it's freaking yeah. retarded well, I don't mean to say that. It's weird. Anyway. All right, folks. I'm going to uh, call this. I'd like to literally special thanks Lisa because she is the shiz knit. Uh, <laughs> Palfrey says, Mass on vacation 48 weeks a year. <laughs> I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Rack, thank you. Fishy Snowman. Uh, everybody, thanks for coming by and uh, watching this Q&A and a little bit of Hangout. And uh, I'll let uh, 
you send it off and then I'll cancel right it on. when you're ready. So why don't you just, right. uh, give an outro? Sounds good. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you again, Mike, for having me here on your channel. I definitely appreciate it. It's definitely an honor for me. And as I end every one of my videos, as always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. And we'll talk to you guys on the next one. All right. Peace out.